Aki thought Shiro was far stronger than she was, but she also thought maybe she could become a bit stronger as her time in New Zealand continued. Time flies by for young Aki. Yes, it seemed like it was only yesterday that she was sipping bubbles, having her nails done, and talking to Cheryl about the concrete slab she was going to lay the following day. <laughs> it was already two weeks since Aki landed in Daniel Carter country. Yes, Kiwi girls were indeed different from Japanese girls, and Kiwi men were very perplexing and hairy. <laughs> with a propensity to wear tight shorts at every opportunity. <laughs> but the sight of those huge billboards of Daniel Carter in his underwear tempered any slight discomfort she felt. Oh, I love Daniel Carter. He's so gorgeous. <laughs> One evening, Aki arrives back at the flat after a particularly gruelling day looking for a job. She has just had an interview for a job at Natural Bob's Ice Cream Parlour. Aki thinks it has gone well, but she has had Aki thinks it has gone well, but she has had some problems reciting the shop motto, often licked, never beaten. <laughs> <laughs> however, the boys have however the boys have some good news for her. Peter and Paul fancy themselves as a couple of Gordon Ramseys and the stars of the local potluck circuit. They've been invited to another potluck dinner this Friday, and they've decided that Aki is ready for the challenge. Or is she? <laughs> God, <I'm> crikey! <laughs> We've been asked for yet another dinner. Yeah. Oh, it's hard being famous. <laughs> <laughs> hey Aki, what are you up to this Friday night? I'm not sure. Why? Well, we have this Canadian mate, Bubba. He's just got back from travelling around a bit, and he's invited us around to his pad for a potluck dinner. You can come if you like. Cheryl will be there. Wow, that sounds cool. Um, what, what is a potluck dinner? Are oh, you kidding? <laughs> it's a dinner where everyone brings a plate of food. All the food is placed on the table, and then you tuck in. I mean, everyone helps themselves. <laughs> it's great fun. Wow, okay. It sounds fun. I don't think we have anything like this in Japan. Ah, the potluck dinner. Aki, it is one of the great Kiwi institutions. I can tell you this, you never go hungry at a potluck dinner. <laughs> it is two days later, and the day of the potluck dinner has arrived. Pete and Paul have arrived home from work early and are frantically preparing their signature dishes. Malaysian stir-fry and Tom Yum soup. The kitchen is chaos, but the boys are having loads of fun and are getting well and truly lagged up. However, as six o'clock approaches, the boys are getting extremely concerned. Where's Aki? Pete, I wonder where Aki is. Yeah! And I wonder what she's cooked for tonight. I bet it's something awesome. I reckon she's a good cook. I don't know. But she's better hurry up. We have to be a Bubba's pad in half an hour. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever seen her cook. Actually, come to think of it, not right. <laughs> that has got to be a bit of a worry. <laughs> <laughs> Hope she's not making that fancy sushi stuff. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why does she get past the seaweed? It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is now 6.30. Boys are getting very anxious. Where is Aki? It's 6.35. Aki arrives home, ready for the potluck dinner. They all hop into the car and dash off to Bubba's. <laughs> Yo, food! It's about time you got here! Man, we have an awesome spread here. Hey, you ready to rock and roll? This is our flatmate, Aki. Yeah. <laughs> and as to what you brought to the table, we have absolutely no idea. Yeah. Uh, welcome to my pad, Aki. I'm sure you'll have an awesome time. Plenty to go around, but hey, tuck in before Cheryl gets here, eh? Well, might not be much left. <laughs> right, Irish? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I reckon she can put back the food can our Cheryl. I don't know where she puts it all. I heard that, Pete. You can stop that sort of talk right now, or I'll make you dance with me later on. Oh, sorry, Cheryl. <laughs> oh, 
nice to see you again, Aki. Oh, I love potluck dinners. What'd you make? Mm. Aki goes pale. A look of fear ripples across her face. <laughs> she didn't know that she was supposed to make something. What's the matter, Aki? I didn't make anything. I, I don't know how to cook. Can't do it. It is full of unconfound material. It is not that I don't know how to cook. I'm just not very good. You're, You're good. killing! Hey, now, now, boys. I'm sure she brought something lovely. Isn't that right, Aki? What do you mean you can't cook? How do you survive in Japan? Who cooks? Don't tell me it's your husband. Yes. <laughs> That'd be a first, a husband that cooks for his wife. <laughs> now, that's a novel idea. <laughs> anyway, Aki, what did you bring? Oh, I love the stuff with that seaweed stuff around it. What, what's that called again? Sushi. <laughs> hey, who brought the vanilla biscuits? Me. <laughs> hey. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Aki was uncomfortable dealing with unconfirmed material. The boys were uncomfortable with the idea that anything in the kitchen was classified as unconfirmed material. <laughs> Cheryl had eaten way too much food and was just uncomfortable. <laughs> and as for Bubba, well, he had eaten the entire packet of vanilla biscuits and was extremely comfortable. <laughs> Wow, there's been full-on non-stop action for young Aki since she arrived in Christchurch. Yes, things at times were a little strange, and the women were very strong in New Zealand. But the country was so beautiful, and she had made some new friends. Japan seemed so far away at times, but when she thought back on the things she had done, moving into a flat with two Kiwi blokes, drinking a beer with Bubba, or having her nails done with Cheryl, any loneliness she felt quickly disappeared. Oh, I miss my family, but I love being in New Zealand. I'm having so much fun and learning so many new things. I'm very lucky. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And so began the many adventures of Aki. What began as a small step for a Japanese girl in a faraway land became a giant whirlwind of cat cultural. What began as a small step for a Japanese girl in a faraway land became a giant whirlwind of cultural chaos. But as with all good storms, the calming eye embraced and enveloped all that crossed her path. Aki's Adventures Done Under, a finalist in the open section of the Fresh FM Vox Radio Audio Theatre Competition. Aki's Adventures Down Under was written by Naoko Kudo and Patty Holder, and was performed by Naoko Kudo, Gray Burton, Anthony Hodgson, Sally Burton, Mike Williams, Tim Bassett, and Ryu Takahashi. <laughs>